Now, if you know anything about me by now, you'll know that I love food. But in addition to loving food, I also love health and I love spirituality. And sometimes those things don't necessarily go together. What I mean by that is that it's so easy to eat ourselves out of health and into disconnection with our soul. For a really long time, I've been interested in not just researching, but also experimenting with myself as to which kind of diet and way of life and lifestyle leads to the greatest health, wellness, and a spiritual connection with all that is. Food seems to be one of those things that really gets a lot of us stuck in life, especially when we're not careful. I think it might be one of the greatest traps that we face, especially with how much food is polluted and so many of us don't even realize what we're eating. And so today I wanna to share with you something that I recently read from Master Paramahansa Yogananda. It's a profound and short little read on the subject of spirituality and food, as well as, you guessed it, the showdown between meat eating and vegetarianism. And I don't wanna share this on the basis of trying to make you pick sides, but to simply bring more awareness to the importance of the choice of what it is that we're putting in our bodies. At the end of the day, I think the biggest lesson for me that I would wanna pass on to you today is that it's more about eating clean food and being mindful and being loving in each and every moment of life. I hope that this following excerpt helps you on your journey of nutritional wellness and happiness. Enjoy. The question of meat eating and vegetarianism is a complicated and controversial subject. What I will say will be governed by present world needs. This was written in 1935. I believe that no absolute view can be given, which is good for all times and all people. Our conscience and human sensitivities are roused much more by the killing of animals than by the slaughtering of vegetables and the skinning of fruits. Most steak eaters would not eat beef if they had to kill to get their meat, but no vegetarian would mind chopping off the heads of carrots. The spilling of blood and administering of pain in killing animals shows that the animals are approaching nearer to human beings in the scale of evolution. Meat is concentrated food and is strengthening, but it is highly constipating, a retainer of body poisons and a harbinger of disease. Vegetables and fruits having a natural laxative action are conducive to health and to the elimination of diseases. Vegetables have to be eaten with more patience and are not as concentrated as meat. Americans are suffering from obesity due to eating an overabundance of various forms of proteins, such as meat, milk, and nuts. Americans should become vegetarians. Meat eating races are usually politically free. Vegetarian India has not been strong enough to dispel continuous foreign aggressions. Hindus have almost no protein to eat and due to fanaticism, they indulge in a starch predominant diet and therefore die thin and early in life. Animals live longer than human beings in India. As a temporary measure, present day India needs to eat lamb, goat, and fowl until she can get enough milk or meat substitutes. Lamb has been found to agree better with the chemical elements in man's body than any other form of meat. Man's life is more valuable to all living creatures than is the life of animals. If the choice must be made whether man should eat meat in order to live or whether the animals should live and man should die without eating meat, I would say that man should live at the expense of the animal. We find that both vegetarians and meat eaters have lived long and healthy lives. Jesus, Buddha, and St. Francis ate meat. Shankara, Chaitanya, and some great Christ-like saints of India did not eat meat. St. Peter was shown a vision of some animals and was asked to kill them and eat. Thou shalt not kill was meant to apply to people and not to animals. And Moses was the giver of the 10 commandments. Fish have blood and a nervous system, but very few fish make any noise when they are killed. Life evolves more complex forms in the mammals, which have different tissues from the fish. The bull and hog, having highly developed and pugnacious nervous systems, feel greater pain and they loudly protest any attempt to kill them. These animals have evolved enough consciousness to understand the love of self-preservation and the injustice of inflicting pain, and therefore they should not be killed. The lamb protests less violently than the bull or hog. It looks as if the vegetables, fish, and meek animals are intentionally given by nature a less developed nervous system that does not register much pain or evoke reactionary protests during pain. This may be one reason why these lower forms of life are made to sacrifice their lives for the maintenance of the higher forms of life. Remember, it's not only what goes into you, but what comes out of you that makes you what you are. Some people who eat meat may be holy and self-controlled, and some who eat only vegetables and fruits may be knaves and lead uncontrolled lives. Above all, eat rightly, think rightly, meditate, and live in divine joy night and day. Follow the God-made material laws that govern your health and physical body, but do not overemphasize the importance of the body. 
nor be too fastidious about diet because mind power is more essential. There are food cranks out there whose only interest revolves around calories and vitamins. And they talk nothing but lettuce and nuts, lettuce and nuts, until you wonder how they can be so blind to other more interesting aspects of life. But don't misunderstand me. I'm not underestimating the value of a proper diet. I simply point out that it is better not to become fanatical about it. The soul is independent of food. And so the body should also express this freedom of the soul. Food seems to be the greatest bondage of the soul to the body. And so affirm for yourself now, good food, any kind of food or no food at all are all alike to me because my body emanates from my soul, which is unconditioned and I am above food, hunger and decay. I am immortal, I am satisfied. All my wants are fulfilled. I am above hunger, decay or death. If you like this video and you wanna support our channel, please check out our Tao Te Ching, The Virtual Way. It goes really deep into the nature of our intrinsic inner reality, how to become harmonious and balanced in life so as to be good leaders in the evolution of consciousness and make the world a better place for everyone. Again, thank you for watching. Much love, and we'll see you next time. Wait, yeah, give me that face again. <laughs>